All right, yes, you're welcome back to the balance ahead of entertainment this morning. Now, if you check your go, go, you go, see this next bus stop now, something will consign me, it consign you, even consign your cousin, your mama, your pal, everybody with their house because this same person now, familiar face, we don't consider until this our cars for on top of the Good Morning Ninja show. Now, they begin one project where they come out, and one of the goals for that project now to do it in now to train traditional bet attendants. Now, this one means now people with it for the rural areas when at them they make sure. Say the people, mama them when they want bump picking. When time reach, now them be the first people that they call before they, they think of hospital. Either that not hospital, even did that local government area. Before they, they even think of better uh, health, primary health care center, if even they available and if they work. Now this better attendance and they come outside. See, I'm say now important thing where they need to do for inside our country. That's now we we'll get this very casual guest from Warif uh, in the person of Miss Chichi. Welcome to the studio once Thank again, Miss Chichi. Good morning. Good morning. Now looking at our mortality rate in terms of. Um, um, the time we woman they take bomb picking, we see I'm saying for our country, Nigeria actually get one of the highest mortality rates in the world, not just in Africa. And they they come they come some people they come outside they believe I'm saying that because we be on that on that developing country. Some people they talk to maybe in our government then get a lot to play in this particular role. But oh now our organization will be right if don't come outside, set a standard where we say on our train as a last year one, not when you become on top of the show, yeah. when I be trained five hundred traditional birth That's attendants. Yes. Una, una do last year and that project has been done sorted and done yes. so now una, and also i get another project with the on ground now tell us about this project okay, get. thank you so much you know say for what if waiting we do now to you know help survivors of rape and sexual assault you know give them the services where they need to heal medical services legal aid shelter and different other support where they feel require you know, so for the gatekeepers project where we train these better attendants. The name of the project yes, of last year. The gatekeepers, gatekeepers project, project okay. yes. So we train these better attendants on how they feel take identify cases of sexual violence for their community or rape, for instance, you know, how they fit they document these cases and also refer them to Warif for treatment. So last year, like you talk, we don't train five hundred and you know, the project lasts for one year. We don't start again this year by training another five hundred better attendants. Last year we trained five hundred additional better attendants from fifteen local government areas. You know, so this year again we get another grant from the same organization, Aspire Coronation Trust Foundation, Act Foundation. You know, because then since the projects they very loud they and they want us make we reach more women. And even these traditional better attendants also say they want make we go other local governments to train more of these better attendants. Because like you talk, women will get belay or even young girls before they think of say they won't go hospital. Now these women they see them as respected, you know, members of their community. So now these women then they go meet. That's why we decide to make we train them on how they fit take help us identify these signs of gender based violence for their community. Help these women and girls and sometimes children because when they see cases of children with their rape, you know, help these children document the cases and also refer them come worry for treatment and other support with them feel need. Now, in addition to the treatment, because we know see a lot of them, they fear to go back to their mama house, especially the young teenagers, and looking at the statistics we'll get on top teenage pregnancy for our country, it's even on the rise yeah. as we speak. And knowing, say, um, a lot of these children, did they hide, did they get shame, um, stigmatization, sure. that be the end, that be the end product for a lot of this um these children or these teenagers or these young mom, these teen moms, how worry if they take help in making sure say stigmatization for inside this local government, for inside these areas where these children, they even for inside township, because for also for Lagos here, we we'll still they get people where they, mm -hmm. they stigmatize um, them, although some people are trying to turn into baby mama slain things. Yeah. But how worry if they take commot stigmatization okay, from so these kind of scenarios? We they, we they encourage them, make them speak up, you know, but like you talk, some people, because of the stigmatization, they won't come out. But we they let them know, say, shame, no, they, especially when we say the teenage girl will get belly or the young girl will get, get belly, and as a result of rape, we they encourage them, say, just come. And our services for war, if not free of charge. So when they come, some of these people, they need shelter. We don't get shelter for worry. What thing we do? We say we they give them referrals to different organizations where we do in collaborations with. We feel house these girls, pending the time we say then deliver the child. You know, for some the family feel say they no mind they go keep the picking. You know, so we go say fine. Any support where we feel give them, pending the time maybe the girl need to learn certain skills so that she will feel financially independent when she born the picking. We they also enroll her for trainings like that, you know. And some people go come say they no one keep the belly, but we know they in support of abortion. It is against our policy, you know. We they encourage them say we understand say maybe now as a result of this rape, this thing don't happen. But you know, if you end your life as a result of that, more if you come out of you, if you still get hope, say better thing will come out regardless of what thing don't happen to you. So we they give them different support, shelter, 
um, legal aid for some who want to pursue the case, and sometimes we train them for vocational skills and different things where they feel like to make them financially independent. You already entered the next question where I want to ask in oh, cases okay. in the situation of abortion with some, because mm. a lot of these young people no go won't keep the pregnancy. Mm. They actually prefer to terminate them um, mm. for reasons best known to them and, of course, to all of us waiting for years. Yeah. Stigmatization is also one of yeah. the reasons why they come on time. But you already answered that question. Now, we could look at the, the challenges the challenges we will not be faced on the project will not be due last year. Mm. And what will not be due this year? Tell us one, because I know, say, if you like, say, security uh, agents also, they involved yes, in making yes. sure, say, this project will not be do if they are successful and as efficient as possible. Thank you. So from last year, after we finish the project, we go back to get feedback from, you know, this traditional better attendance to find out how this project don't take impact on our work for our communities. And you know, aside from accidents, saying a very good project, now people don't be more comfortable to speak out, knowing, say, a place like where if they wouldn't feel get support without paying for any, anything. Our services are completely free, you know. One of the things where we see, where we say major challenge to go still be culture of silence. A lot of people still know they're comfortable enough to come talk. And sometimes now even the family, even when the girl, they're ready to talk about her. Now the family go say, I beg, no talk. Maybe now the papa now ain't raped the girl. You know, them go say, I, I beg, you know, if you talk this kind of thing, if people hear outside saying that your papa raped you, now a very shameful thing. So we see the battle with that culture of silence. You know, we need people to know, say, this thing not be something today sh ashamed of. You know, come out to talk about it because the child that don't rape need help. This thing now, long-term damage if they don't come seek for help immediately. We don't get cases where we say, Bella even still day very, me, I feel say that one, I still small thing where you feel managed because Bella, if you give birth to the child and all, you know. But we don't get cases where we say, at the end of the day, when we check the girl, you don't get STI, HIV don't enter the matter. You know those things where we say, now, lifelong damage. You know, some, the psychological effects now, if for a very long time, it takes continuous counseling for them for, to feel come out of, you know, that kind of a thing. So another challenge, again, when we face now, the issue of the reporting process, especially with regards to prosecution. You know, some of the better attendants come out to talk, say, ah, say at times, these young girls, oh, the first point of call now, maybe police station or general hospital, and some of these um, police stations don't get gender desk. And gender desk, now, the units in the police station, maybe say they don't train them on how to handle cases of, say, gender-based violence. Maybe they rape women, the woman can't report. They don't train these police officers on how to handle them. Or maybe domestic violence, my husband beats me, the woman go gender desk. You know, they don't train these people on how to handle them. But some of these stations, when you get gender desk, they, they meet with officers, maybe say, when the girl come, they go ask her, say, what do you wear? And uh, why you follow the boy, go? Uh, Yusef, why you work out for night? And all those questions, maybe say, you know, really day relevant. So they ask survival of rape. So what we can decide to do now? Say, for this cycle, this one will they run now, now to train 100 police officers. These officers then will come from the same local government who we don't train these better attendants. So that we, we can teach these officers on how they, they need to understand how sensitive this case of rape and gender-based violence, different, different forms of gender-based violence, you know, how sensitive it is, how they're supposed to take attend to these young ladies when they come, listen with, to, to them, you know, with compassionate hearts, you know, because if to say that their daughter, that kind of thing happened to how them go feel, you know. So basically, what we want to try to do with, for this training now to help them enlighten these officers, whether they get gender desk or not, but enlighten these 100 police officers on how they fit take handle these cases of gender-based violence or rape when the girl come to their office so that they're going to say they're supposed to listen to the girl and suppose, you know, show sympathy when the girl come, say, ah, this thing don't happen. Then also make sure, say, the reporting process and prosecution starts immediately. All right, that's not very, not very good information we would give out right now. Um, that's something really very important for inside our community, especially for the rural area. Yeah. But you know what, I'm going to need to still keep it because I get questioned in terms of this culture of silence mm. and the way forward. But we're going to need to pass more break right now. By the time we come back, we'll still get Miss Chichi in the building representing the Warif, talking about the project we they get for local government areas in, Lagos, in Nigeria. Stay with us. All right, yes, you're welcome back to the Balance Ahead of Teletainment this morning. Now we still get in the house a representative of Women at Rick's International Foundation, will be Warif, and the person we'll get for house, she be they talk about the project where they get, the one where they don't do, and the one where they, they do now, and the, one of them where they're ongoing as we speak um, today for Inside Shomulu, and the next project where they come out for Inside February. Miss Chichi still there in the building with us. More, welcome once again, Miss Chichi. So very quickly, let's just, um, to just wrap it up, uh, make we just talk about the project where you get, um, the one, the one way you don't, you don't do, but you never, you still they finish, the, they wrap up today. Um, what's in the project they all about okay, also? So now still best attendance. So the best traditional best attendance then get two categories. Then get the faith based and they get the core. 
So the faith base, now those ones will be saying, then they use holy water, then they pray, you know, and the Christian part. Then the core, now the traditional people will be saying, then they use herbs, then they use incantation and different things, you know, when then they attend to women, we get belly. So we don't, be, we suppose train 500, but not be all of them come. So the remaining one, 104, now we they train today for Shomolu. For Shomolu uh, yes. Okay, yeah. so so um, the next one where they come out, when did it happen, and who be the, which category of people would they actually be involved? So for February, we're going to train the police officers, the 100 police officers who I mentioned. So by February of 2019, we're going to train the 100 police officers from different LJs, about six LJs in Lagos State. government areas in yeah. Lagos State. Fantastic. So for people who want to join this course, some people who are interested, some people, for some people who want to learn in terms of training, in terms of um, being um, a certified traditional birth attendant, even if their local government not in this category for now, mm. how they feel even reach you? Well, on a social media handle, they. Okay, so if you find us for anywhere for social media, just search for Warif NG. Once you search Warif NG, you will find us. That's W A R I F N G. You will find us. Or if you go for our website, www.warifng.org, you will see all our information there. Or you call our confidential helpline for 080. 921-0009. That's 080-921-0009. And that number, they open 24 hours 24 a day. 24 hours a day. All right, fantastic one. Oh, now they do a very wonderful project. Um, the number of lives on oh, the impact, even past the 500 on oh, that still, oh, they do because mm -hmm. it, they actually multiply and they fair. Because when you train them, then go also train, train the younger ones where they're behind them. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming to the studio. Thank we wish you the very best. To enjoy more of this, our Ogunke videos when you just watch, Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.